Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith, and today we have your regularly scheduled Not Actually About Books video. I'm trying to do six of these this year, uh, and it was an effort to make me get more excited for sewing projects. Uh, and again, much like last time, I had big ideas for doing one project across a video, uh, and I think the problem I have with that is I am bad at scheduling the amount of, like, figuring out of shots that you need for that kind of content. Uh, so I think possibly, maybe for the next one, I'll just give myself a bit more time? Maybe? I think? Um, so instead, what I thought I would talk about is mending. Because I am uh, a big believer in sustainability, I'm not always perfect at it, because who of us are? Uh, but one of the big things I did back in 2000 and... Probably 2020, I think. Would that have been round about when it was? I, I suspect so. Was um, I really tried to give up fast fashion. I don't always succeed. Sometimes you just need a pair of pants. That's how it is. But I tried to um, limit the amount of fast fashion I was buying because I truly believe that one of the big things that you can do as an individual is where you put your money. Uh, and I was just fed up with buying really rubbish, cheap clothes that I didn't actually fit my body properly, I didn't like them very much, and uh, I wanted to kind of move away from that. So I still shop in charity shops occasionally. As a larger sized person, that is more difficult, uh, and I am on the end of the scale where it is still possible for me to do that, so I'm aware there's a huge amount of privilege there. Um, I also try and shop small where I can. I have a few things from smaller brands that I really, really love. It is a complicated, multifaceted, not everything is entirely good or entirely bad kind of scenario here. And at some point in the future, maybe Maybe we'll chat through like my favourite small business shops that I have purchased things from, or indeed uh, my favourite sustainable items in my wardrobe, maybe? I don't know. Um, but one of the other things I wanted to do was learn to sew for myself, because as we all know, clothing sizes are nonsense, and it's fun to be able to make something that actually fits you, and in theory I wanted to also learn how to better tailor the things that I do own to fit me better, that kind of thing, uh, and maybe it would make me wear my clothes more, because um, I'm trying to wear everything I own a hundred times before I consider giving it away, and that's a really useful thing I find when you're buying something, is you can think, am I going to wear this a hundred times? Is this going to last me a hundred wears? That was all very blithery, I have a lot of stuff in my mind about this, and I haven't planned out this video at all, but one of the big things I think that often as a person who's learning to sew, that you kind of forget to learn, or that isn't brought up, it's all like, right, time to learn how to do all of the sewing, but it doesn't necessarily teach you how to mend the things you already have, and in some cases, that's actually a nicer thing to be able to do. I don't know about you, I'm a person who I find one thing that I like wearing in my wardrobe, and then I wear it 50 billion times, and quite often, if you are a messy person like me, I'll snag things, I'll, I'll get things ruined and then I have to throw them away and I get sad. Whereas if I can repair it, if I can give it just a little bit more life, that brings me joy. And often, one of the things that I find is that these kinds of little mending projects can build up to the point where they feel like an insurmountable thing and you just go, oh, I'm just gonna get rid of this clothing. But actually, individually, the tasks don't take very long. This is my request of you. If you have a small sewing task that you want to do, if it's sewing on a button, fixing I don't know, uh, sewing the hem on the pair of trousers, maybe, uh, if you've got just a little, a little tiny task that Justine's doing, getting a stain of something that just requires a little bit of delicate attention, that's what you should grab for this video, and just do it at the same time, because by the time the video's done, you'll either be done with the task, and you can be like, great, now I can wear that again, or you'll be so far into the task that you might as well finish it, because sometimes that is part of the journey. Sometimes finishing is starting. That's not deep and profound, that's just something that I find very helpful. So I have a few of the things that I mended next to me just to talk through, um, because why not? I had filmed some a little bit of b-roll for them, but not a huge amount, so I'll just throw that in where I can, and we'll just have a chat, as I say. Sew on your buttons, live your best life. So when I discover that an item of clothing requires some mending, what I currently do is I shove it into this um, very old Kath Kidston laundry bag, because if you didn't have a Kath Kidston phrase when you were 14, did you really live? Did you? So I have a few things left in here, but what I did for this video is I just went through and pulled them out one by one and went, right, what am I doing with this? What needs to happen? So the first thing I dealt with was this shirt, which you've probably seen in many a video. I used to wear it all the time and I stopped wearing it because I realised that the, um, the hem portion was coming apart. I didn't really know how to fix it and that's kind of part of the problem because I didn't want to turn up the whole hem because it's already quite a cropped shirt uh, and I, I still like to have the opportunity to tuck it into things. So instead I um, actually put some bias binding over it. I don't love it, it's not a perfect fix because it looks a little bit messy and by a little bit I mean a lot, but it is now a thing where I could put the shirt on and I'm not going to do more damage to it, which is kind of my first port of call. Like, I don't want to open the wound on my shirt any further, I just want to have it something I can wear again, because I think if I get this back into rotation, 
Uh, I'll feel better about it. It also needs ironing, so I'm going to put it to one side because I will not wear it until I've ironed it. And by iron it, I mean I'm going to put it in the shower while I have a very hot shower and steam some of these wrinkles out. That's the plan. But yeah, that took maybe 10 minutes. Uh, but actually, probably the largest portion of it was doing the mental gymnastics of which way bias binding goes because my brain doesn't work very well that way. <laughs> I think in hindsight, what I should have done is just sucked it up and turned the whole hem up a little bit more because I think that was the issue uh, and I could have done that on my overlocker, but that's by the by. After that, I dealt with this pinafore, which you're not gonna be able to see very well, but it's actually lined with the fabric from the dragon skirt, which brings me joy. Um, it's still like, I would say 90% finished. I need to fix this zip because something's gone a little bit awry with the top back. It just needs a, a hook and eye or something in it. Yeah, it's not not quite right. This was something of a mock-up for a project that I wanted to do to do with Dark Academia, so that's why it's this lovely navy corduroy which got all over my office. I'm never sewing with corduroy again. Um, but the problem this had was uh, I pleated the skirt but I didn't pleat it very well. Uh, again, why it's a mock-up, a wearable mock-up. And um, I did get some footage of this. There was just a pleat that was coming out of the waistband, so what I had to do was go all the way into the interior and unpick it uh, in fact, I think I have. I did the stitching slightly differently so I'd be able to see where I did it. Here we go. So I unpicked a line of stitching here and went in and unpicked the skirt from the top, reattached it and just like kind of hoiked the pleats back in because if I was doing it absolutely properly, I probably should have unpicked the whole thing and put it back together. But to be honest, I don't wear this at the moment at all, partly because I'm worried it's going to fall apart because I knew the pleats were coming out of it. So... I just wanted to get it fixed enough to see if it's something I will wear because the other reason is I don't want to make a second one that's made much nicer if I'm also not going to wear that. I would say maybe that was a 15 minute job to get that fixed to a point where I can now, I could now wear this out. There's a few bits more I want to do with it before I'd be like confident wearing it to a nice event where people wouldn't be like, why is her zip so strange in the back of her dress? But maybe I could wear it with a jacket. I don't know. Then I did some work on a old fast fashion top that I wore fairly often, but I wasn't picking up as much for multiple different reasons. And this is my kind of, let's see if this is something I'm going to wear kind of moment. This, it's this black, I think it's, I think it's Boohoo originally, and it's made of entirely plastic. And I, it's, it's not a comfortable thing to wear, but it does look nice on me. And it had elasticated sleeves here. And I decided that the reason I wasn't wearing this top is that the way the elastic was, it was really uncomfortable on my forearms. And I really don't like tight things on my arms. Just sensorily, it's unpleasant for me. Like even a too tight headband, headband, hairband, I get a little bit a little bit stressed about. So what I actually did was I just took the elastic out and it was a bit of a journey, but I think it's gonna be just like a nice little floaty top. I, I typically put this under things so that works well. And yeah, I, I like it much more now. It needs a wash, but it is now something that I can wear. And that's nice because I could probably have got away with donating it to a charity shop, but it's not a particularly nice garment. Uh, and I don't want to donate it and then have it sit in a charity shop or sit in, you know, wherever it gets sent to for a billion years until someone decides that they want like a three pound old boohoo top that someone's clearly worn several times. You know, whereas now I have a thing that I might wear a few more times and then I'd feel more comfortable giving it on because I know that it's a comfortable thing to wear that will last. In case any of this is coming across that way, this isn't intended as a holier than thou. If you donate your clothes or if you don't want to mend things, that's absolutely fine. If you don't have time to mend things, that's absolutely fine. It's just something that I am learning how to do and I wanted to share it with you. I did a couple of like very little things that I don't now have upstairs because I've since moved them to other places. I finally got around to taking the buttons off a top that I made a very long time ago that I don't like the fit of. I didn't like it as a top. It wasn't me, the colors weren't me. It was just sort of a mock-up of a mock-up of a mock-up. But what I had done is I bought buttons specifically for that and I knew that I was gonna want them again. So I just trimmed them off, popped them to one side so I can use them in a future project because they're nice buttons. I think they're probably going to go on a shirt of some kind in the future. Uh, and then I haven't worked out what I'm going to do with the fabric from that top, but I think what I'm going to do first is tear it apart and maybe turn it into um, reusable tissues because at a certain point when you've made something, there's not a huge amount you can do with it when you are my size. Like if I was a size two, then maybe I could turn it into a wonderful fancy top, but that's not, not going to happen for me here. That is one of the things I would really like to get better at doing is using my fabric scraps. I have so many and I think I just need to figure out some kind of project that needs stuffing of some kind and we'll, we'll work from there maybe. I also mended some socks. Uh, this is one of my favourite things to do. So for my birthday this year, my wife actually bought me a mending kit and I got quite a like snazzy one from this mending website in the UK. I'll link it below because I think it's really cool. And it came with a weaving loom, a darning loom, which is an invention I think from the 40s, but don't quote me on that. Uh, and it lets you 
darn things so slightly faster than darning them another way would be. You can darn by hand, you do not require one of these, uh, but I really like it. And basically I purely use it for socks uh, because I am a person who, I don't wear slippers in the house and I just walk around in socks all day and I work from home. So the amount of times I put on shoes in a week is uh, very, very limited. So I wear a lot of holes in the balls of my feet on my socks, the balls of Yes, the balls of my feet wear a lot of holes in my socks. And before I was just throwing them out because I wasn't buying particularly expensive socks. And then I started to think how many of my socks were in landfill over the years. And I started to not have a panic about it, but just think like maybe that's something I can maybe stop half as many socks going to landfill from me if I start trying to mend them. And sometimes socks are beyond repair, but sometimes you can do something. So I got my, my favorite fluffy chicken socks, which are completely gross on the feet before I show you any of the footage. Just let, know that I wear them all the time. They are clean, they are just also gross. I am a gross person. So yes, I got some yellow thread and I did the, the darning thing and I fixed them and now I have my socks back to wear and they will last a little bit longer, which always makes me very, very happy. The thing I need to start doing is getting better at seeing just before the socks have actual holes in, that's the point to darn them. Because at the moment, sometimes things are just not rescuable and I have to say goodbye to socks before their time. I will need to buy new socks very soon, but for the moment I am making them last a tiny bit longer and also having fun doing a little meditative activity while I do it. I would say that maybe takes 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes for two socks because you get in the swing of it, you know? And that's one of those things where I'm still not good at it. I'm not good at that kind of mending, but every sock that I do, I do slightly neater than the last time and I'm enjoying learning how to do it. It's a good time. I think the last thing that I did Yes, I again don't have because it's in the wash. So sorry to end on something of an anticlimax, but that's the red dress. The red dress that was in my sewing projects video last time uh, was actually unfinished in that video. I hadn't hemmed it yet. And all hemming is for me, because I own an overlocker, is turning it up, ironing it, and sewing a straight line. And I hadn't done it. I'd swapped out the thread on my machine to a different color. So it wasn't red thread anymore. And I was just like, oh, it's so much effort to change the thread over. It isn't. And I went, right, okay, no. It's finally time we're gonna sort this so that I can wear it and not look like a strange person who has an uneven, unfinished hem. This was one of those projects and it is the the slight, not warning, but the thing to note with things like this. Sometimes you start things and you go, this is a 10 minute project and it turns into a 30 minute project because I had to re-overlock the bottom seam because it was uneven and my overlocker came unthreaded. And if you own an overlocker or a serger, you will know they are a beach to rethread. I have to watch a video every time I do it. It's such a pain, but I got that done. I got it redone. It came apart again. I had to redo it a second time. That was fine. Got it, switched over the thread in my machine and then finally got around to the actual bit. And the actual task took 10 minutes as I thought it would. It was a very easy, simple fix. But the, the lead up to it did take about 20 minutes. <laughs> but it's now done and I wore it to a friend's barbecue the next day. And I was just like, this is, I made this and I got lots and lots of compliments on that dress because it is incredibly cute. And I think I might wear it to a work event next week. I'm excited about it. Thing I'd been procrastinating for a very long time and without this video would never have finished. So thank you so much, Booktube, for letting me stop procrastinating my projects. So those are all the things that I have achieved uh, as I was trying to make this video. I'm sorry that I don't have nice b-roll of all of it, but filming b-roll of sewing is just the antithesis of quickly finishing a project, so it's fine. I have two more things in my mending bag, which I will talk about, and then maybe in the future I'll come back to it and I'll have, I'll have fixed them or finished them or whatever. One is this, I think it's a Sadie Alice top, who is a, or was, a small business dungaree maker in Wales. I bought this on Depop and it doesn't have a label on it. And I'm wondering if maybe someone made this and passed it off as a Sadie Alice top, but I don't know that for sure. It is definitely the same style. Uh, and it's just like a little Thai crop top thing that would, would originally have had dungarees on it. And I thought I could make it fit me just by taking it in at the sides. So I took it in about, about an inch maybe maybe two inches um, and it didn't work and it's just not quite fitting right. And I can't work it out if it's because I am having like that, that body image issue of getting my arms out. Because if you've noticed on this videos, I never get my arms out and this was a bit stressful. Or if it's just that I don't like the fit of it and it needs some shaping put into the bodice. I don't know. And I think this is a future, not big project, like a medium sized project of actually just pulling this apart because it's nice fabric, it's lovely and it's reasonably well made but not well made enough that I care too much about tearing it apart and just putting some darts in and making it making it something that actually fits me and maybe adding a skirt and turning it into a dress. I don't know but it's it's going to be something. Uh, so that's a future project and then the other one is this 
uh, which looks like absolutely nothing because it is. This is my favourite pair of trousers, would you believe? I think these might have featured in a vlog way back when, in um, 2020 when I first bought these. Uh, and if you are a person with equally powerful thighs, you will know that sometimes, despite one's best efforts, you have to say goodbye to your favourite pair of trousers because your thighs have just conquered them. Uh, and the battle was finally won. And I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with them. So what I did think is actually this piece of fabric, this is this very stretchy shared waistband, is completely fine. Nothing wrong with this bit of fabric. And most of the leg fabric, also completely fine. It's just the... the the, the middle bit that's not. So I cut this off, I've cut the legs to a point where I can seam rip them and see how much fabric I've actually got. And I think I'm gonna try and add a skirt to this waistband, because it's really, like, it's nicely made and it's it's nice. Um, and just like get a black skirt and maybe do a trim of the black and white fabric from the trouser legs at the bottom. But that feels like something that requires brain cells that I do not currently have, so I haven't actually started that. This was kind of what I was hoping I would have done for this video, but I know it's not going to happen, so I'm not going to try. So these are going back in my mending bag for the next time I get the urge or get the feeling that, that I have no socks left. I hope that this has been enough time for you to finish sewing on that button or whatever it was you were doing. I find mending my clothes to be one of the more fulfilling aspects of sewing. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's something about giving extra life to something you might otherwise have thrown away. If I could go back and again talk to myself early on in sewing, I'd be like, let's learn to mend at the same time as we learn to sew things from scratch, let's learn how to fix the things we already have. Because a lot of things in life I have thrown away that I definitely could have fixed. And it also means that if you are still buying fast fashion, but you are like me in 2011-ish, where you would see something and you'd be like, it's just got a broken button, you can fix it, and I never fixed it, and it just sat in my wardrobe until I threw it away again, even though it was a great bargain, you might actually get round to fixing those things and then you do get a great bargain. So there's that. If you did manage to do a little bit of mending during this video, please do let me know down in the comments below. It would bring me much, much joy to know there was a little community thing happening here. I've also been thinking about doing some kind of crafty stream at some point in the future, so if you would like to get on that, also let me know if you're interested because it helps me know to do things if I know people want to go to them. Bookish content will resume in a few days, I'm sure. In fact, if this is a Thursday video, bookish content will resume tomorrow. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe for that. If you are someone who happened to stumble across this video because you were looking for sewing content, hi, I'm Judith. I do normally talk about books, but I do also sew. So you could subscribe. You just also get a lot of book recommendations. But I think there's a fair amount of crossover between sewing communities and sci-fi fantasy communities. So... I think you'll be okay here. Nothing makes me feel more loved and appreciated in life than my patrons over on Patreon who support the channel and make videos like this possible, especially when I know that I'm going away from my typical audience's interests. It's fine. Thank you so much. If you would like bonus content and early access to videos, you can check that out down in the description, along with my social media and my Discord if you'd like to come and have chats about books or crafts or anything you like. Thank you so much for watching. That's all from me, and I will see you in the next one. It's gonna be some bloopers now. I have no idea how much of that is usable footage. It's probably fine. <laughs>